Finally, so finally looking at Van Evra's uh, Death is Limit, looking at Section 3, it seems that there is Van Evra is interested in the question of what we are thinking of when we think of death. Um, and what does it mean to be aware of death? Uh, one of the things he wants to dispel, I, I suppose, is that uh, we can really... Well, what, what, is the, what is the content of such consciousness according to the notion of death that he's laid out, death as limit? Let's see, this is on in the third section, uh, page 175. He says, uh, first, the present view is strongly opposed to the view held by many continental philosophers from Schopenhauer, who's a 19th century German philosopher, to the present that we have an awareness of death as such and that from this we come to regard death as an evil the recognition of which points up the tragedy of the human condition, making total human happiness impossible to achieve. The view I have advanced exonerates death as the purported snake in, the, in our garden. We have, as experiencing beings, no more an awareness of death as such than we have as beings which have temperatures and awareness of absolute zero. Limits like death, that is, limits on our powers of conception, are simply out of our league. We cannot grasp such limits. Which is quite interesting. Um, the proposal here is that we really can't conceptualize death. Um, we can think of it as a limiting factor or a limiting function or as a limit or end of our conceptual powers, but we cannot conceptualize it itself in a way there's nothing there to conceptualize. Uh, he says, uh, there are content, there are contentless and hence, excuse me, they, uh, th those limits are contentless and hence provide absolutely nothing for our awareness. So to be aware of death is not to be aware of anything. Uh, from this point of view, death cannot diminish our human happiness in the same way that bodies in motion are none the worse for having a lower bound. The, bo the bound, not being a member of the series, cannot defile it. The series is what it is, happy or unhappy, good or bad, quite independently of any bound as such. So I suppose what he means there is that if we were thinking of death as something terrible, we would be thinking of it as a state, and a state of punishment or a state of suffering or a state of sadness connected with our deprivation of life, but there is no such state. Death is simply the limit of life. It's the thing that we're always getting closer to in our experience. And you can say we never reach it, but of course we do reach it. It's just that upon the reaching of it, our experience ends, presumably. So there's nothing to experience for us except that our experience ends, but we don't experience the ending of our experience. So there's nothing... If we think of death as, as somehow or another of... as a, tragic or bad, then we're misconceiving it. And, and this is really, I would say, very strongly supporting Epicurus' original notion, which he does talk about in this uh, brief last section. Uh, he says, uh, secondly, the view presented provides an explication of Epicurus' remark that death is nothing. Or rather, it explains the fact that his remark seems strange. Epicurus is speaking of the limit as such, and he is surely correct in saying what he does about it, particularly because he is aimed at those, it is aimed at those who hold that death is to be feared in the sense of fearing what might happen to the self, which goes on after death, right? And that makes no sense, right? Because the self, nothing bad can happen to the self in death because the self ceases to exist in death. The reason why this, his remark seems odd is that it purposely ignores the sense in which death can be said to be something which is the sense which captures all that death as a limit is. Conceiving of death as a function of life actually aids Epicurus's criticism by showing how talk of death can be so construed that the assumption of the existence of experienceless selves can be avoided. That is, the notion that death and some another, how another is a terrible state that we would lament it makes no sense if we simply conceive of death as a limiting function for being alive. That is, there's nothing really to think about when it comes to death. There's no, it, it's, as he said, it's out of our league in terms of conceiving it because it would force us to conceive of a state of nothingness which is inconceivable. Rather, what we can conceive of is simply 
our lives being finite, our experience being finite, our, uh, and death is just an ordering function. Death is really, a, it is a, uh, a practical notion that reminds us that our, it, that our experience will not go on infinitely, just as our visual field seems to be the whole world when we look at anything, but we know that there's something beyond our visual field that limits it. Right? There's no, we can't see the limit of our visual field, but we know that our visual field is limited. We cannot conceive of death, really, as nothingness, but we know that our, uh, our lives are, in fact, finite.